I am Neil Wanek, your fitness guru. The next time you're on Mars, remember, it's always bring your anti-material wipes to wipe down the seats. The spray paint has been cleaned up, but emotionally, the damage has been done. Now the A's have been here for 45 years. Let's see what their fans think about their team possibly moving to San Jose. Quick. Fit. Minute. One and two and three and four and... The YMCA accommodates people of all ages. Basically, the Y is an open door. All that and more here on KR News. The Boston bombing gives one of the Bay Area's popular public transportation a reason to increase any type of security. BART's new initiative is to have canine patrols and enhanced police on duty. Being a BART rider, you know, every day to and from school, it's it makes me feel more safe, especially after what happened over in Boston. BART officials are starting to improve the surveillance cameras to avoid any possible bombings on BART. Starting next month, BART will start banning passengers who have a history of committing violent crimes on BART. The fact that they're doing this uh, makes me feel a little bit more safe, um, and it's unfortunate that it takes, you know, tragedies and things like the Boston Marathon bombing to, you know, increase security. BART is also looking to increase their security, not just for their passengers, but for their employees as well. I've been with BART for 18 years and uh, saw a lot of changes basically with 9-11, and since then uh, a lot of things kind of let down a little bit and now with the Boston Marathon we've seen increase in surveillance, increase in security. BART spokesman Jim Allison released a statement saying station agents and passengers alike are going to see more police officers out there. The important thing is if they see something unusual, report it. It's everybody's responsibility to keep an eye out. If you go to our BART website you'll see uh, under Rider's Guide there's a lot of tips on what to look for under safety and security that tells you about uh, what to look for, red flag behaviors, and you should report those behaviors to any uh, uh, BART policeman or station agent. In addition to more law enforcement on BART, station agents are also going to be trained on how to handle aggressive passengers. In San Francisco, Neil Wanek for the Academy of Art University's K-Art News. St. Anne's Church, a quiet and peaceful church, but recently, it was vandalized with satanic symbols and statues were covered with spray paint. Four-foot pentagrams and the words Carp Noctum Satan, meaning Seize the Night Satan, were sprayed on the walls. An eight-foot cross, which is erected in the front of the church, was toppled. Faces of Mary and Joseph were spray painted along with satanic symbols. Union City Police classified the incident as a hate crime because of the timing of the vandalism. Catholics are currently celebrating Lent, a period of repentance and moderation. It's wrong, it's disrespectful, especially during Lent. We have to pray for them. As you can see, the spray paint has been cleaned up, but emotionally, the damage has been done. I think vandalism in general, um, not a good idea. <laughs> I don't condone it. Um, especially at my church, and just to see that is, is a terrible thing to see. Um, I think uh, just these people who did it, uh, they probably don't even attend that church or not even religious, I'm sure they're not. Parish priest Father Jeffrey Baran was not available for this story, but he issued a statement through the Argus stating that we need to remember to always counter violence and hatred with love and compassion. In Union City, Neil Lewanek for Academy of Art University's K-Art News. The Fremont Newark YMCA is a non-profit organization that has been serving the Tri-City community for over 40 years. The YMCA is about creating a positive change in children and families, and their after-school program personifies that. It's changed my life because I know that my son is being taken care of and my son, um, lacking a father figure uh, in his life, needs good male role models and I'm getting them completely in everywhere we turn around. The YMCA helps move the community forward by having a competent and passionate staff. Not only to the children, you help the parents and the neighborhood and the community. They are all, you are building a whole community. Together. The YMCA accommodates people of all ages. Basically, the Y is an open door.
We get uh, good exercise here. I enjoy the people that I meet here. Well, I come to the Y because I wanted to have some physical activity, but that isn't all there is to it. There's a lot of social activity as well. It's made me more interested in my community. We sort of lived a, a, a self-contained life within our home as far as the community is concerned. The Fremont Newark YMCA envisions in advocating for healthy children and families and is dedicated in making a difference in the Tri-City area. In Fremont, Nilly Wanig for the Academy of Art University's K-Art News. For centuries, marijuana has been a staple of American culture. In November 2010, California voters rejected Proposition 19, which would have legalized possession and cultivation of marijuana. By receiving 46% of the votes in 2010 to the opposing 54%, analysts say it was a respectable loss. It made national headlines, won support from unions, civil rights groups, and even some law enforcement organizations. Supporters say it took one giant step toward a full-on legalization effort that will likely return to California in this year's ballot. State Director of the Pro-Legalization Drug Policy Alliance, Stephen Gutwilling, says it validates that Prop 19 has permanently impacted the national debate and moved marijuana into the mainstream of American politics. It's clear. It's an issue people take seriously. I mean, if you compare it to alcohol, alcohol is way worse. More drunk driving, more deaths related to alcohol with liver poisoning and all that. Dude, legalize it. You can market it. We can tax it. We can make so much money in the state of California. So why not legalize it and make money off it as a government? We need, we need money right now. There are multiple initiatives vying for a spot in California's 2012 ballot, but the LA Times reports that the Repeal Cannabis Prohibition Act is the one with the most vocal support. In order to earn a spot, sponsors of the initiative will have to collect over 500,000 signatures by April 19th. If this initiative passes and is approved by voters, three jars of his peanuts simulates how much marijuana Californians can have for personal use. Of course, there are still concerns over this issue. Oh, it's still a drug. It's still, it's still illegal and I think it should um, you know, keep being illegal because I just don't want that to be the norm for the future generations. I don't want to have to see somebody rolling up a blunt while I'm having dinner or smoking it in my face during dinner. In San Jose, Neil Leonic for Academy of Art University's K-Art News. BART is probably the most popular transportation in the Bay Area. A recent UC Berkeley test found high concentration of at least nine bacteria strains and molds on a random seat. I think that the seats and everything is just really disgusting and that they need to clean it out more than once a day if they even do that. BART police received over a thousand complaints of eating, smoking, and drinking. There's so many people that get on and off. I don't know who's been sitting there and it looks really gross. There's food everywhere, so they need to clean it out a lot more. 245 complaints of urinating, or defecating and 56 reports of spitting. Mark's so disgusting. Last time I came here, there was old chicken wings that were stuffed in between the seats with mold on So the next time you are Mark, remember to always bring your anti-material wipes to wipe down the seats and also keep your hands clean with anti-material soap. The New York Times reports that Bart spends about $595,000 a year to clean the seats but will only take $2 million to replace them. Okay, so this person who rides barge five days a week for school and work, it's kind of ridiculous. I have to pay ten fifty a day and just sit in these kind of crappy chairs. I mean, you don't know what happens in these chairs. So once I hurry up and drive up home, I immediately want to just change my clothes. I don't know what kind of chemicals I got on me or germs, so I immediately take out the clothes, put it in the washer, and make sure I take a shower right when I get home, always. Unfortunately, BART officials declined for an interview regarding this problem. In San Francisco, Neil Wanig for Academy of Art University's K-Art News.